バカバカ物を買い込んでただろうだから<笑>それでなくなっちゃって<笑> Tristia Legacy is a remastered edition of an old classic called I Umi no Trista, and it's the first time that it's had an English release. For fans of games from the Atelier series, it's reminiscent of the older titles, but entirely focused on recreating a port town. Without battles or anything resembling an RPG format, it focuses on the daily life of a young inventor instead. <laughs> Tristia is a small town that used to be known as the Jewel of the Sea. Once upon a time, it was a bustling area, vibrant in its maritime trade, but it's only a skeleton of its former glory. After an attack by a giant dragon, Tristia suffered a lot of damage, and its people see no hope for the future. As Tristia is close to its last days, the mayor decides to play a final card, calling the genius Prospero Flanca for a town regeneration plan. However, he has grown old and sends his daughter Nanoka instead. Though she is skilled and knows the family's style crafting all too well, the townspeople can't believe a 14 year old kid would be able to handle such a task. Despite that, Nanoka is determined to make the most of her learning experience. She's a bold inventor who dedicates herself to her craft. Always with an optimistic outlook, she may be a little wet behind the ears, but there's no denying her skills, which the player gets to see and practice throughout the game. Tristia Legacy is an inventor simulation game, with the player creating new items and helping Tristia grow. The gameplay loop follows the pattern you go around town, you buy and sell items, and then you go back to the workshop to study them and craft new products that range from food. To marvelous technological inventions. Sometimes you'll get a story mission that demands specific creations in a week, but you can also explore the system your way and sell whatever you make to stores later. Just keep in mind that you're selling the patents, so stores won't buy them more than once, which means creating too much of the same thing may lead to burning cash and never recouping. Among the items that you can make, there are expansion projects that the town hall can approve to attract more tourists. The more you play with expanding, buying, and selling, the more Tristeel will thrive, attracting more people and funds. By the time hundreds of people are running around town, you'll have plenty of random NPCs rushing to your workshop to ask for new products. While time is precious, as quests have strict deadlines, going around town has no cost. Time will only move when you're at home studying materials, crafting something, or sleeping, which is a mostly unnecessary option for your R inventor girl who is always pulling all nighters. As such, though it may be a little tedious to do it every single time, exploring all areas whenever possible lets you trigger new dialogue events, get a few free items, and be on the top of your game. You can learn new recipes by going around town and studying items at the workshop, with the latter costing a unit, one out of three, from your day and some money. Depending on the item you're investigating, you may have to study it multiple times. Coming up with new recipes may also go faster if you're lucky. The same goes for crafting, as recipes have a success rate. The more intricate and delicate an item is, the less likely you're to succeed. Failing means spending time and materials only to come up with nothing. However, each new try makes a success 5% more likely next time, and luckily, you can always cheat and reload your save to try again. Seeing Nanako's antics as she tries more and more things to enhance Tristia makes for a cute journey. It's compelling to learn more about this alternate world and see the town get busier as time goes on, with people running around the streets everywhere and clear improvements to the numbers. However, I must say the game lacks a lot of polish. Tristia Legacy is a remaster of a 2002 PC game, and as far as I can tell, it tries to be true to its source. Visually, the game had a noticeable upgrade, with the sprites having a lot more detail and the game being available in HD for the first time. Sprites and scenes with CGs are reminiscent of back in the day while still feeling fresh. When it comes to the other aspects, however, it doesn't fare so well. First of all, the voice tracks are all off at times. As they seem to be from the previous release, the recording quality is noticeably lower than current standards. Some characters' grating voices even have artifacts from going beyond the reasonable microphone volume, so they likely need a new recording. As a game with a lot of dialogue, it's also noticeable how text boxes' transitions can be a little slow. Sometimes it feels like the game stuttered, as it takes too long to bring up the following line, but it's not the case as the menu is available. 
However, the worst part is the quality of life for the gameplay. For instance, the tutorial happens only once and the player has no access to it again. Even though the game's simulation is relatively simple for the genre, many details can be confusing or leave room for misconceptions. Menus never have all the information the player needs. For instance, when it's time to build an item, you only have the visual cue for having or not having the necessary materials. If you want to know how many materials you have, you need to look at your inventory in a separate menu. Forget making multiple of the same item consecutively with a single click, but that's a bit understandable considering the success rate. Sometimes it gets worse due to translation inconsistencies. For example, some people may ask for an item, then the menu will call it something different. Most of the time you can at least imagine which one they meant, but when someone asks for an air conditioner and the menu says cooler, which is another item entirely, it can get pretty annoying. Menus may also have some overflow, and the translation could have had a better look, with typos and slightly unnatural choices from time to time. Finally, still on the issues that may seem small but greatly hinder the game are the buildings. To improve Tristia, you must go all over town, preferably buying and selling items from different stores in all districts. Unfortunately, interacting with places is done by hand, and you don't have a list of available stores. While going around town is cute and neat to see Tristia's growth, it gets less and less appealing over time. Not only are there just too many stores, but the positions seem random so some facilities may only be barely visible or interactable from the corner of the screen. Dristia Legacy is a cute simulation game, and I enjoyed my time with Nanaka and her friends. However, its issues hinder the experience significantly, so most players are less likely to have a good time. Still, if you're fond of simulations and cute girls with some book smarts, this old school classic may still be for you. Noisy Pixels giving Tristia Legacy a 6.5 out of 10. Thanks for watching. Please read the full review at noisypixel.net. Noisypixel is run by a group of gamers who work hard to deliver news, reviews, previews, and more. Please subscribe to keep up with all our future content.